Hello, welcome to, to Timely Word and Prayer. This is the third day of the 28th week. The third day is the game-changing day in the week. And my prayer for you is that this will be an experience that, you know, this third day of the 28th week will really be a turning point, a game-changing time in this week. That's my prayer. Father, we give thanks to you as we come to share this word. Lord, thank you for my brothers and sisters who are listening, you know, on the other side. Lord, I pray that this word will bring answers to prayers. Lord, as you speak to us concerning this third day, that it will be an experience, your people will experience a turnaround. Uh, this is a game-changing day, we pray in Jesus' name. So, the third is a game-changing time. That's what the Bible reveals. You know, it didn't just happen that Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. You know, things change from the third point. Abraham was going to sacrifice, Abraham was going to sacrifice uh, his son to God, the Bible said on the third day, he lifted up his eyes and he saw where they were going. You know, the Bible is very particular about the third day as when something changes. And the third chapters of the Bible also illustrate this, that this is a time when things change. Now, the, the third has its patterns in the third day of creation narrative. The third book of the Bible and in the third chapters. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 3, I mean chapter 1, and read about the third day of creation to see how that day turned around. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Now, on the third day of creation, at the beginning of the third day, what God did was to complete the battle against the waters. Uh, before, when God began to create or to restore creation, he had three things to deal with. The first was the monopoly of waters, the monopoly of darkness, and the absence of anything you know of things the earth was formless and void and there was just nothing so god had to deal with emptiness he had to produce things to you know deal with emptiness he had to dismantle the monopoly of the water toward the monopoly of the waters and dispel darkness and then furnish his furnished space so that's what god did so on the first day God began to deal with darkness. God began to deal with darkness. And this is really the, these are really the three main battles that we fight in life. The battle against darkness. Darkness of ignorance. Darkness of inexperience. Darkness of satanic bondage. These are the things that we have to deal with. Now, we also have to deal with oppressive monopolies, those who have gained advantage and don't want others to, to ever raise their heads. That's what the waters represent. Water covered everywhere and said nothing else is going to exist. No one else is going to raise up his head. I know we have situations like that in our world, people who have gained advantage you know, gained political advantage, gained financial advantage, gained, you know, uh, gained social advantage. And now it looks like, or gained cultural advantage. And now it looks like nobody else is going to show, you know, raise his head or her head. And so they become a monopoly. So that's what the waters look like. The water dominated every space and did not make room for anything else to exist until God began to deal with it. So on the third day, God completed the battle against the waters. In one word, 
let the waters be gathered together in one place and let dry ground appear. That was the end of it. God completed the battle against the waters. So today, this third day of the week, the Lord completes the battle against the oppressive waters. The oppressive waters for this week. Oppressive waters for this week. And so God said, let the dry ground appear. And it was so. <laughs> and, and God called the dry ground the earth. So the earth manifested on the third day. So you see how that this is the game changing day. The earth surfaced to become the platform that it has been since creation, since the third day of creation. So God called the, earth, the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herbs that yield seed, and the fruit trees that yield fruit according to his kind, whose seed is in itself and on the, on the earth. And it was so, and the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yield seed according to his kind, and the trees that yield fruit, whose seed is in itself according to his kind. And God saw that it was good. So in the evening and the morning were the third day. So you see, on the third day was when God brought forth the earth. And the earth, by the word of the Lord, brought forth vegetation. And see how, what our world would have looked like without the solid ground called the earth. And without, or without vegetation, sustenance. That's where our food comes from. That's where our medicines come from. So this is like a day of resurrection. That dry ground brought out life, brought forth life. So when, the, when Jesus said, I will die, and on the third day, I will rise from the dead. On the third day, on the third day, he said, I will rise on the dead. Why did Jesus talk about rising from the dead on the third day? Because it's, it's already enshrined in scripture. It's there that the third day is a day of resurrection. That's when, that's the first, the, the first, the third day of creation was when life came out of the dry ground. Life came out of the dry ground. So this is a pattern for what God does. And in the third day, he brings forth his people. Let me show you something in the book of Hosea. We're going to read the sixth chapter of Hosea to see how this is illustrated. Hosea and chapter six. Hosea chapter 6, come and let us return to the Lord, for he has turned, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. <clears throat> I'd like to read that again. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has planned, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. But on the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. So the third day is a day of raising up things that are down. God raises people on the third day. God, as it were, opens the ground. On the third day, he will raise us up. That's a picture of what God wants to do today to raise up people like he raised the dry ground that was hidden under the waters. God, to raise up, God had to command the waters to give way. So when God is 
about to raise up the things that have hidden people, the things that have stopped people from rising up. God said, give way, give way. He can change people's positions. He can remove people from positions. He can, he can take them out. He can do different things because he's about to raise someone up. So whatever is going to be an obstacle to the rising of that person, God says, you have to give way. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that on this day of rising up from the dust, on this day of resurrection, Lord, let every hindrance to this resurrection, let every hindrance to manifestation on this game-changing day be taken out of the way. In the mighty name of Jesus, when Jesus was to rise from the dead. You remember the 28th chapter of Matthew. Jesus, you know, was going to rise, rose from the dead. On the, you know, the, his resurrection is recorded in Matthew 28. But before he rose from the dead, the, the, the people said, this man said that he will rise from the dead. Therefore, let us seal the tomb and put armed soldiers to watch the tomb. So, those people, both the stone and the soldiers, were to make sure that Jesus did not come out of the grave. But the power of God was going to walk against them. So we're told that there was an earthquake. And when the earthquake came, the, the soldiers fell down as, as if they were dead. The stone was removed and Jesus came forth. So this is what the Lord wants to do today. I pray that God will command an earthquake. Not just that he does it. This moment, this moment, I speak in the name of Jesus and command an earthquake on your behalf. Let there be a shaking around you that takes away what needs to be taken away, that removes what needs to be removed so that your head can rise up, so you can, you can experience a rising. Whatever has stayed, stayed, whatever has sat over your life as a as the stone over the tomb, in the name of Jesus, let an earthquake, earthquake from heaven, throw that stone away. Let the door be opened unto you for rising. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we speak that this will be an experience in the nations of the earth, in the communities where people live, that that oppressive monopolies will be taken out even this day. So there can be a rising of what is hidden in the dust. In the mighty name of Jesus, let that which has been in obscurity come into manifestation today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for 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 answering this prayer. He said, on the third day, he will raise us up. And that's what God has done. This third day, God will raise his people up. This third day, I mean, this third day, God is going to dismantle obstacles, dismantle roadblocks, dismantle evil ceilings, so that people who are down and in obscurity can experience manifestation. Father, we thank you because we know that this is done. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So believe it and confess it that this is a day of rising. He said, on the third day, he will raise us up. Now you personalize it. On this third day, God will raise me up. On this third day, on this third day, I will experience manifestation to the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus.